Hello, my name is Tony Jones and I am the Simulation and Manufacturing Specialist for Address and today I will be talking to you about Autodesk Inventor Optimization in Autodesk 360. So, what is Autodesk Inventor Optimization? Well, first of all, you need to know that it is exclusive to subscription customers so you need to have a subscription account and once you've done that and you've set up your Autodesk 360 account you can link your 360 account to your subscription serial number then you're able to start using the, the stress analysis function that's within the 360. Now you need to work with Inventor Professional in order to get the benefit of this. Now if you're using Inventor Professional you'll already be familiar with stress analysis within the professional elements. Or this 360 cloud-based stress analysis that takes an element of this further. You've got the ability to do parameter table stress analysis which allows you to create multiple configurations of your design in the stress analysis environment and to analyze them in one hit rather than having to set them up one at a time. Now, Autodesk 360 cloud-based or inventor optimization will allow you to take this further by creating larger and more complex configurations but utilize the processing power that is available in the cloud. So rather than restricting you to the resources of your particular PC, you can actually upload it to the cloud and use multiple servers and multiple processes and immense amounts of memory in order to analyze your system and analyze your analysis and the various iterations of that design. So this um, frees up the ability to get on with other jobs while you're working and you can leave it running in the background without affecting your use of Inventor or your PC. It is also only available in selected Autodesk suites. So let's look at an example of how we use Autodesk Inventor optimization. Now here I have a component that I've used before and use it days and this is a component we set up to show the use of parameter tables within Inventor stress analysis. Now the the thing that you're trying to do there is show that you can create multiple configurations of the same component within the stress analysis environment and analyze them in one lump so that you're not repeating the modeling process and the analysis process individually. Now the Inventor optimization is kind of an extension of that but it's giving you uh, much more resource benefits. So if you're familiar with Inventor Professional and you use the stress analysis environment already it won't be a million miles away from what you're already used to using. So let's start by going to the environment tab as we would normally and next to the stress analysis you'll find your optimization. Now the first time that you fire this up it will ask you for your login details for your Autodesk 360 account. Once you've done that, it will take you into the optimization environment, and you'll see across the ribbon bar similar tools to the stress analysis environment that we can start using straight away. Now, first of all, I would always say work left to right across the ribbon bar. Same thing here. With the materials, I can go in and define my materials exactly the same way as I would within the stress analysis environment. I'm happy with the mild steel. I then go on and define some constraints. So I'm going to start off by putting some pin constraints in. And I have here two pinholes. Happy with those. Next thing I want to do is define the stop faces here. So I'm going to put a fixed constraint in on these. And you see it's pretty straightforward and very, very similar to what you're already used to within the stress analysis environment. The next thing I want to do is put a load on the, these faces here. So, I can pick from my typical loadings again, and I'm just going to put a force on there, and a force on there of 10,000 newtons. Now you can always go back and edit these at any time, you, you're not stuck to these once they're applied. Although you may note that there's no um, browser history showing these as you would expect within the stress analysis environment, it is just a simple case of picking them, right click, and edit. So you can go back in and redefine those. So we've pretty much set up the, the constraints of our design. The next thing we need to do is define the parameters that we want to drive. Now within the stress analysis environment this is uh, done through a table setting. Now within here we can actually do it slightly differently. If we pick on the parameters option up here all we're doing is picking the geometry that we're interested in and it'll provide us all the dimensions that we created in Inventor to define what it is that we want to drive. So for instance I want to drive the thickness here, hit the drop down and I can define the thicknesses that I'm interested in looking at. So I can go 4, 5, 6 
and I'm happy with those. They're the that's one parameter set already. The next thing I want to look at is actually the size of this slot. And it's the length that I'm interested in. So again, use my parameters option. And I can go in, pick up the slot. And there are the dimensions that define that slot. So I can now tick that, drop down again. And the sizes I'm interested in looking at are 200, 250, and 300. And that's that one defined. That's all I need to do. And obviously I can make that as elaborate as I want. And because I'm now going to be pushing this up to the cloud, it doesn't matter how complicated it is. It's not going to kill my machine in the process. So the next thing I need to do is to look at my settings for my optimization. And in this case, yep, I'm happy with those settings. And I'm going to make sure it's refined. And I want it to be defined to a factor of safety of 2. Once I've set that. I can just hit the optimization button and this will now upload it to the cloud and start building the configurations and analyzing them and you'll get this job status dialog box here that allows you to see what's going on you can leave that open while you're working and see what's going on but the benefit that using 360 cloud for the inventor optimization is that obviously we're using the performance and the processing power of the cloud of the multiple machi multiple machines that this is being loaded up to but it's not impacting the use of my machine and I can close this down once it's completed or I can close Inventor down while it's running and come back to it at a later date and the analysis will continue up on the cloud and when I open this part up again it will offer me the information and the update as to how it's getting on with the analysis. And then you see that it's now starting to process the job and we can start looking at the various configurations that are listed underneath. And I don't really want to sit here watching this and waiting for it to be done. It's going to take a little while to complete. So I'm now going to finish my optimization. As soon as I do that, it says optimization is currently running. Do you wish to continue in the background? Yes, I do. And I can now go in, close this part down. And come back to it at a later date and carry on with my work, work on other aspects of my design. And when I'm happy, I can now come back to my my file, go to my environments, go back into optimization, and it will pick up an update where this analysis is. So while that loads up, we'll see that all the constraints and loads are going back onto there, all saved in the file from earlier, and we'll see that the optimization dialog comes up as you see there, still running. So, I'm going to leave that now and come back to it later. By the wonders of modern technology, what seems like moments for you is in fact a few hours later for me. I've been away and done some work on various projects and I'm now back to deal with my simulation. And that's because I've received an email from the cloud to tell me that my simulation is completed. So I'll just change the email so you can see what you receive. And this has highlighted that my analysis is completed and all configurations were successful. So I'd best go back to Inventor. So what I'm going to do is open up my file again. And this will remember it's linked to the optimization link to Autodesk 360. And we'll be able to pull down the results and inspect and see whether there's anything we need to do to develop a design further. So we just go back up to our environments, back into optimization, and that will load up all the information, all the files, the uh, links that were created earlier on today. You can see here that the constraints and loads have all been reloaded, and it's just pulling the final links together on our optimization. Now you can see up on the ribbon bar, we have our results button. And if I click on there, that will allow me to go into the results and analyze the, the outcome of my design. And you'll see across the top there are a number of tools that we can start utilizing to pull back information from here. So we can sort and this will allow us to go in and start understanding some of the results that have come out of this. And in this instance actually the base configuration is not quite up to scratch for the design. Um, and out of all the conf uh, configurations it's offered the nearest best fit. But as you can see the safety factor isn't too and it's not meeting the requirements we've asked for. So 
There is obviously some more work that needs to be done to this design, but if we had a multiple in there, it would show all the configurations that match our requirements, and it will also enable us to pick out and try different ranges. Um, so in this case, more work to be done, and looking at the high stress areas, probably we could do something with the size of the slot and the radius to improve things. So I'll close that down. We can also animate our um, analysis so we can see how it's deforming, much the same way as we do with an Inventor Professional. Which will stop that. We can probe our design to pick out areas of interest. So I can go down to here and see well, what's that bottom corner like. And it's telling me the factor of safety there is actually quite high. And it's only really around this localised area here that needs to be improved. We can also view different aspects of our analysis and ultimately what we can do is output a report. Now one of the things I would warn you of at this point is make sure when you're done that you go back into the setup and export to the stress analysis environment which is the button next to the results. The reason for this is as soon as you close this file you're going to lose a link, it's going to assume you've taken all the information out that you need, it's not going to store it up in um, auto desk 360 so you need to transfer that information once you're happy with what you want to work with into your stress analysis environment within Inventor. Having said that we can also have a look at the report that it generates. I've already done this once before but I'm just going to overwrite the report and it will bring up all the information in very typical format that you're familiar with with Inventor. Anyway as you see you can scroll down through and here it's shown that actually the base configuration was that and this is the optimal configuration this is the closest match to what we've asked for but we can see from the values that it's not quite what we want once you're done and you're happy you can go back into your setup and as i say export to stress analysis environment finish and that's your optimization through inventor completed if you have any further questions about that you can contact our office and we are more than happy to discuss and train on these issues.